working on the historic achievement of the establishment of diplomatic relations. What I remember from those times, which we often lose sight of, is for the five decades, five decades before that, hundreds of thousands of Americans had died on the battlefields of Asia. And millions of Chinese had died on the battlefields of Asia. When I arrived in Asia in 1972, my classmates, my friends, were still dying in the war in Vietnam. In 1978, so when I was that Xiao Kudo, the political environment in both countries was not favorable to establishing diplomatic relations, to completing the task that was begun by Nixon and Kissinger and Chairman Mao and Zhou Enlai. It was not favorable. In fact, I remember experience, experiencing that. When you're, there are a bunch of, there's some folks from the State Department. When you're a Xiao Kudo, you get to sit in the second row. And sitting in the first row is the principal. In my case, the principal was Herb Hansel, the legal advisor to the Secretary of State. And we had these hearings in front of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. And he was excoriated by the senators for selling out American interests. He stood firm. I, of course, was a whopping 28 years old. <laughs> Hearing these senators berate my boss, I was terrified. I was wondering what was going to, have to happen to me that night. He stood firm. President Carter stood firm. Secretary Brzezinski stood firm. Secretary Vance, Secretary, Deputy Secretary Christopher, Richard Holbrook, and Herb Hansel all stood firm. And we overcame the difficult political environment. Now, as a Xiao Tu Do, I was not invited to the White House dinner that night, welcoming Deng Xiaoping. <laughs> but I did get to stand on that cold day on the White House lawn, and then we had a working lunch with Secretary Vance, where Deng Xiaoping was present. And Deng Xiaoping's words <coughs> at that working lunch have stayed with me for those 45 years. He said, this evening, to be here to celebrate the 45th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries. Um, I want to thank Ambassador Huang Ping and Madam Lily for inviting me here this evening. Um, you know, I thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for showing those photos in the front page of the New York Times from January of 1, 1979. I think that really illustrates to all of us how important this, um, the establishment of relations were between our two countries. You know what? It was January 1, 1929, and the president was Jimmy Carter. And he said at that time that he believed the normalization of relations between our two nations would advance the cause of peace in Asia and the world, as the ambassador pointed out. He thought that both the Chinese and the American people would benefit greatly from the commercial and cultural relations that normalization would bring. And as we heard, it was controversial and it wasn't an easy thing to do. It took courage and leadership, but both Ping Jumping and President Carter decided that that was something they wanted to do. After President Carter left office, he continued his efforts to improve relations between our two countries. This just wasn't a one-off thing that he decided to do in 1979. He visited China many times um, after he left office, and he established a China program at the Carter Center, which pursues better relations and seeks opportunities for cooperation between China and the United States. The Carter Center, which is located in Atlanta, Georgia, recently held a symposium celebrating the 45 years of diplomatic relations between our two countries. And I'm proud to say that two of the National Committee on American and Foreign Policy's um, employees, uh, the people who run our Asia program, Susan Thornton and Juliet Lee, participated in that event. 
So for those of you who aren't familiar with my organization, the National Committee has long been committed to peace and stability in the Asia Pacific. And we try to maintain open channels of communication through dialogue and informal non-government discussions and diplomacy. Cooperation between the United States and China is very important. And the National Committee on American Foreign Policy, which is based here in New York, works hard to provide informal opportunities for bilateral cooperation uh, between our two countries. And then we take what we learn in after we work with our Chinese colleagues and we brief um, members of the governments, including the Chinese government, the US government, and beyond. Um, ensuring that the United States and China can continue to navigate toward collab collaboration on bilateral and global issues is really one of the challenges of our time. We've had relations for 45 years, and as the ambassador said, we've had ups and downs, but what family members haven't had ups and downs? So <clears throat> I look forward to another 45 years. And we at the National Committee were also really pleased that um, President Xi, our two leaders, uh, President Xi and President Biden, met last year in San Francisco. As we've mentioned, they had pro uh, productive discussions and created new pathways for cooperation on a wide range of issues, including things that are important to the American people, like cooperation on stopping the flow of fentanyl and artificial intelligence. In addition, I think it was extremely important that the two leaders agreed to restore military to military cooperation, which in times of tension, I think is extremely important for our two militaries to be talking to one another. Um, they also discussed presuming people to people um, and academic exchanges, like the discussions that we hold at the National Committee. So we see this as a really positive step in the right direction. And when we visited Beijing last fall, um, we, we heard from all our Chinese colleagues, it was before the, the, um, the uh, historic summit, that both sides were looking and hoping that this would happen. So we're very glad that it did. So I want to again thank you, uh, Mr. Ambassador and Madam Lilly, and all my Chinese consulate uh, colleagues and friends who really support us very well, whether it's issuing us visas or you know giving us information. We really appreciate the support that all of you give um, the members of